Hi everyone, Hannah here and I'm going to talk to you today about our two cell kits. We have one on animal cells and one on plant cells. And both of these kits can be done as you see here with our paper templates, or you can even go in and turn them into truly three-dimensional cells using gelatin. So some of the features that these kits have that other cell kits available might not. One of the really cool things about our kit is that we've actually built it to scale so that all of the organelles and the templates themselves are within the same scale. So students can practice proportions in their math classroom while reinforcing what the organelles of the cell are. Students are really gonna understand the three dimensionality of a cell when they start building it on these two dimensional templates. With the plant cell, they're gonna realize that you have to start stacking things in order for them to all fit within the cell membrane and the cell wall. One of the cool things is when you then have students realize that you have only 10 mitochondria here and 10 chloroplasts, but in a real plant cell, there are hundreds of them. The only way that it could possibly fit when these are all built to scale is if it's in three dimensions. And the best way to really show students how much more space you get is by literally building it in a third dimension using gelatin. So now we're gonna hop over to my kitchen where I'm gonna actually demonstrate how you would go about the process of engulfing your cell parts in gelatin to create a three dimensional cell. You're going to need a stovetop, a refrigerator, some gelatin, and a balloon. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is get some sort of pan that is vaguely rectangular for a plant cell or vaguely circular for an animal cell. Now if you're using a bowl or something, be sure to line it in cellophane really tight so that the gelatin will come out of there when it is done. I'm gonna use this with our plant cell today, and this pan is gonna be my cell wall, and I'm gonna use cellophane to represent the cell membrane. Next, you're gonna to want to boil your water for the gelatin. While the water is boiling, it's a perfect chance for you to work on the vacuole. And the vacuole on a plant cell is rather large, so rather than use the template we included with a two-dimensional one, you have to create it in three dimensions with this. What you do is you take a balloon and you fill it with water and make it the right size so that it's still within the same scale as the rest of the plant cell parts. Once the water is boiled, we'll be able to start in on our gelatinous matrix of the cytoplasm. Turn off the burner and pour the gelatin into your final cell thing. Now, if you're using a plastic container rather than a tin tray like I am, you're gonna need the water to cool just a little bit before you pour it in because you don't wanna crack the bowl. Once it's ready, get a whisk ready because you're gonna need to stir this to keep it from clumping. Then pour it in. Stir it for about two minutes until all of the gelatin is dissolved and there aren't any clumps. Once it's completely dissolved and you have no more clumps, add your final two cups of water. When you have all of the clumps out of there, let it cool down to room temperature and then move it to the fridge. Now, once you put it in the fridge, you're going to want to check it every three to four minutes. Once you can tell your gelatin is just starting to harden, that's when you need to insert the 3D printed items into it so that they are engulfed within the layers of the gelatin. First thing I'm gonna insert is my vacuole. As you can see, it's a little bit taller than the gelatin is, but that's fine because you can have the students think about this as sort of a cutaway into the inside of a cell. Otherwise, the cell membrane and cell wall would go entirely around the outside, which is not the case here. Now for the rest of the pieces, you have to consider how you're going to be presenting your final piece. In this case, I'm going to leave it in the tray because the tray is representing my cell wall. So when I insert my objects, I'm going to do so with them pointing upwards, so right side up. However, if I'm doing, say, an animal cell where I'm doing this in a bowl and in the end I'm going to tip it over and then take the bowl off, I want to make sure that I then insert all of my 3D pieces upside down so that when it's flipped over, then they're right side up. When placing the rest of your organelles into your cell, it's important to keep in mind some of the relationships that happen between them. For instance, the nucleolus should be placed inside the nucleus and the whole nucleus should be placed inside the endoplasmic reticulum. For the rest of the organelles, it doesn't really matter where you place them because they are all just freely floating within the cytoplasm. If you're finding that your organelles are floating back up to the top of your gelatin, that means you need to let it harden just a little bit more before you continue to this next step. As you can see, it's doing a much better job this time of staying submerged. 
still could use a, maybe a little bit more hardening, but not too much. So I encourage you to be very deliberate about placing these at different heights. Not everything should sit at exactly the same height because you were discussing the three dimensionality of the cell. Whether you're using this in the math classroom to talk about scale and proportions, or if you're using this in the science classroom to talk about the organelles of the cell and cell structure, it's a really good kit to have on hand and a really useful demonstration so students can really get a hands-on feel of what a three-dimensional cell looks like to scale.